Hello all. Uh, this is John Nogueira. I am the Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder at Sigma Excel. Today's webinar, we are introducing the new features in Sigma Excel version 7. Something that we're quite excited about are called exact statistics. Many of you are probably aware that when you run a chi-square test, one of the assumptions is that at least 80% of the cells have to have expected counts greater than 5. So if, in other words, if more than 20% of the cells have expected counts of less than 5, chi-square is unreliable. And often you'll hear people say, well, just collect more data or consolidate categories. And that really is a Band-Aid. And what we have done is we have put together in our package uh, what are called exact statistics based on permutations. So we're no longer relying on the large sample chi-square, but using permutations, we compute the actual exact uh, p-value, Fisher exact, or uh, on the non-parametrics, the appropriate statistic, say, for Mann-Whitney or crust the walls. So basically, it means that you have a p-value that you can trust when you're dealing with small samples with a scatter plot matrix. So if you have a small sample and you're doing chi-square or you're doing non-parametric tests, then normal, traditional statistics can be misleading and exact statistics are appropriate. But where we've added exact statistics are on the um, the, the non-parametric, the one-sample sign test, the Wilcoxon sign rank, the two-sample Mann-Whitney runs test, Kruskal-Wallace, and Moods median all now have exact statistics as avail available as options. And uh, behind, underneath the hood, we're using what are called network algorithms to speed up the computations. So, so that's something that you don't ne we don't necessarily have to solve all permutations. There are tricks that you can use, algorithmic tricks, to uh, speed up the process so that you can still get an exact t value but not necessarily have to solve all permutations. One important note, when you're using exact statistics, this does not mean that you've added power. It's, it's eliminated a source of error due to small sample size, but it doesn't mean that you have a more powerful test. Power only comes through sample size and now, if you, so if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, it could be because you had insufficient power to detect. So keep that in mind. On the other hand, you have expensive data collection, and you have a small sample, and this is all you have. You really want to make the best of the analysis with the data that you have, then exact statistics are the way to go. There is kind of an intermediate category where Exact statistics are computationally too intensive. It would take you hours and hours to solve the p-value, but the sample size is still too small uh, for regular uh, large sample statistics to be valid. And in these cases, we provide an option called Monte Carlo p-value. So by running 10,000 or 100,000 simulations, we give you a Monte Carlo exact p-value with a 99% confidence interval. Now, please do not confuse the confidence interval here with a regular confidence interval. A regular confidence interval is on the statistic. This is the confidence interval on the exact p-value. And you'll see that in, in some examples coming up. So here are some guidelines in terms of when to use exact. For example, in a Wilcoxon signed rank test, if you have 15 or fewer, you should use an exact. Uh, Man Whitney, if each sample has 10 or less, you should use exact. Kruskal Wallace, 5 or less. Moods Median, 10 or less. And Runs Test, less than 50. And the chi square, a rule of thumb is when more than 20% of the cells have an expected count of less than 5. So in version 6.2, we included Fisher's exact for the two proportions. Now we've expanded it so Fisher's exact will work on a full contingency table or um, two-way rule by column or pivot table. Of course, more information on this in the appendices of the workbook. And with that, we'll look at some examples.
we'll go to the data set, the, that non-normal task time data set that um, we started with, back to the data. And the, uh, the report highlighted or recommended that one sample will cost an exact. What we're going to do, actually we're going to start with a regular Wilcoxon. And then we'll do the Wilcoxon exact. So I'll go to non-parametric tests, one sample Wilcoxon. And again, it's the null hypothesis is zero, it's a difference, and the alternative is less than. So according to this Wilcoxon analysis, there is no difference or no significant difference between the before and the after. Now, we will rerun using Wilcoxon exact. So again, we'll go down to non-parametric test. This time, non-parametric test exact. One sample Wilcoxon exact. And we'll run that. And, you know, it's not a lot of difference, but notice now it is less than 0.05. And so the, the key thing here is that the, the exact gave you a different answer, and the, but the exact is the correct answer. And by going to the exact, uh, you can see that it's indeed a, a, a reject of the null hypothesis. So, so that's the one sample with Cox. And we also have another example, which is uh, I'm going to use a data, data set that was from a dental study called oral lesions. And I'm going to do a chi-square analysis on that data set. So I've relabeled the oral lesions to just A, B, C, D, E, because basically this could be like product defects instead of uh, medical problems. And region 1, region 2, region 3, I did, it's just generic. The data was actually derived from some studies in India and published in a dental journal. As you can see with this data set, this is count data. But you have zeros, and you have lots of small numbers. And that's a big problem for chi-square, because remember, chi-square expected counts have to be, the majority of the expected counts need to be greater than 5. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to run the exact. And the nice thing about the exact is that it does give me both the regular chi-square value as well as Fisher's exact. So I'll go to statistical tools. Chi-square test exact. And this is already a two-way table. If you have raw data, you would use chi-square test Fisher's exact. But because I already have a pivot table or a summary table, I'm going to go with chi-square test two-way table data. And I'm going to use exact here. By the way, when you run exact, you have the ability to increase the computation time, typically 60 seconds most problems will be solved. But if you have large data, you're going to need more time. However, I would caution you that if you start getting into large problems, some of those things could take hours. And that's where you need to use Monte Carlo Exact. So let's just run this. First of all, notice the expected counts. A lot of them are less than 1. And that's bad, because none of them should be less than 1. And there's only two of them that have expected counts greater than 5. Clearly, this is a problematic data set. And where you see it, here's your chi-square p-value. Your regular chi-square p-value is 0.14. That's a clear fail to reject. But the Fisher exact p-value is 0.01, a strong reject of the null hypothesis. So this is it's a nice example to show just how much of a difference you can get when you're assuming a large sample uh, and using chi-square when, in fact, with small samples, you need to use the exact statistics. So what I'm going to demonstrate next is the use of Monte Carlo simulation. Now, this was solved very quickly, so it's technically not necessary. But I like to just, just to illustrate how the Monte Carlo works. If we switch over to Monte Carlo exact, you have your confidence in level for the p-value. And the default is 99%. Keep in mind. What this is, is the true exact p-value will lie somewhere within this confidence interval. It is not the same as your confidence interval on your test statistic. It's going to report the Monte Carlo p-value and the confidence interval on that p-value. So I have 0 0.0082 to 0 0.013 is my 99% confidence interval. And my estimate 
is 0 0.0106. All right. So Monte Carlo is an approximation, but giving you a 99% confidence interval, you know that somewhere in that interval, most likely exact true value will lie. So that's the Monte Carlo exact. So then we'll we'll call the webinar uh, we'll call it a wrap. And I thank you all very much for your attention and for your attendance. The PowerPoint is available immediately, and the data sets, the examples that I've used are all in the workbook, and, and the data sets are available with the installation of version 7. So with that, again, thank you all very much for your participation.